everyone, we are back and we have more fabric mail to open today. This week, it is from Happy Cactus Fabrics. Um, again, an amazing a company that pr produces amazing fabric. I'm in love with everything they do. Actually, um, the hoodie I'm wearing is uh, their fabrics from one of their rounds. Um, you can see the adorable origami animals and the super cool chalky watercolor rainbow um, create panel. So uh, let's see what we got today. Oh, just a second, sweetie. I'll be right there. Oh, oh my gosh, this is so incredible! Oh, do a little peek. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh, look at this. Okay, I had to go help the little one. Okay, anyway, we're back. Okay, this is amazing. Look at this! Look! Oh my gosh! So this is the bamboo lycra. You can see how flowy it is and soft and delightful and luscious and I just want to wrap myself in this. Oh, I love bamboo, bamboo lycra. Bamboo lycra is amazing for anything to do with summer. It's super um, flowy and breathable and just soft and wonderful. Look at those colors. So this is from their um, Pokemon round, which is absolutely incredible. All the prints, of course, are amazing as always. This is the Bamboo Lycra of the Rainbow Galaxy super unique um, way that they're doing it. I have never, I haven't seen anything like uh, this before. I'm really excited. Oh, yes. Look at this. Oh my gosh. How amazing is that? I want to be the best like no one ever was. I'm actually not a part, a part of the original Pokemon fandom. I didn't play a lot of video games growing up. When Pokemon Go came out though, I was really into it. And, you know, I love the characters and stuff. And I know that the hubs, the hubby, the husband, the man of the house is very, very into it. So, so I know, I already know what I want to make with this. I, I ordered this with a specific idea in mind. I have this really cool hoodie idea that I want to do with these um, that I saw on Pinterest, which it's kind of like a crop hoodie uh, with cat ears on the hood. And I love everything to do with cats. I love everything to do with rainbows and galaxies and nerdy stuff. And so it's going to be just like the best all in one. And I'm really excited. So without further ado, I'm going to go throw this in the wash and we will be back. Uh, we have our gorgeous Pokemon Rainbow Galaxy fabric and more um, cut out and ready to be sewn. Um, if you find at any point in this video that you want to see what um, how I cut something out or if you have questions about the fabric or any pattern modifications that I did, um, be sure to check out the Facebook live video that I did um, while I was cutting this out. Uh, it is public and it's on my profile. I'll link to the video in the description below. I answered a bunch of questions in that video that I often receive about um, pattern drafting or different modifications that I do and I talk about the way that I did modify the patterns that I'm using today. What I decided to go with today is uh, we're doing a little crop top with the panel part and then we're going to do the crop hoodie with the kitty ears um, out of the bamboo lycra. I think that first I'm going to go ahead and sew together our little crop top. The first step that we're going to do is we're going to sew these darts. Now I actually didn't mean to cut these darts. I got carried away chit-chatting on the live video and uh, just ended up cutting them. Oops. So um, I'm going to be sewing them very 
very small and very close to the seam allowance because I don't want to cut into this panel at all. So I'm going to be really careful while I do that. Let's get started. So you can see I have sewn those darts together. You can see I used a very small seam allowance um, so I don't need to do any trimming or anything. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put right sides together of the lining and the top. And I'm going to serge just this arm bit right here, this armhole. Serge those together. Side note, something that you will notice in um, all my sewing tutorials is that most of the time I have the same color thread in my serger. Um, I really only ever change the left needle thread um, and I really only ever change it for darker fabrics. So because this is um, black fabric or really, really dark fabric, I did switch out the left needle to a black thread. But other than that, almost always all of my thread is like a light gray, just because I don't really feel like changing it for every fabric that I use. You can see that's how it looks with the armbands surged. Just like that. And um, this crop top does come with a band on the bottom. Oh, and as always, all patterns and fabrics are going to be linked in the description below, as well as, as I mentioned earlier, the video of uh, me cutting up all this stuff, if you feel like you'd like to watch that. Now we are going to sew the back piece. And once again, we're going to just sew the, the arm bits. Those parts, whatever these are called. I'm going to sew those. Alright, so that back piece is done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the front piece and the back piece and I'm going to figure out which way we're facing and we're going to sew up the side seams. Now you see how I kind of opened it up here. Right sides together line up your seams just like this and we're going to sew that up. So you can see we've got our side seam sewn and by sewing it that way it fully encases all your seams which is really nice especially for a, a close fitting shirt like this. You won't, won't have any uncomfortable seams. So um, I'm now going to go ahead and sew together the band that goes on it and then attach that to the shirt, to the, to the bottom of this. And then we got to do the neck band and I'll show you how to do that. I have sewed together the band for the bottom and the way that I did it is I sewed um, the bottom seam of the front part and the lining together and then I again sewed the side seams like I did with the top. we have left is this neckband which um, functions as the straps as well. It's a free pattern and it doesn't have very good instructions and so I'm kind of winging it with the neckband but I have done it before so I kind of know what I'm doing um, but we'll see what happens. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go put this on and then I'm going to kind of guesstimate and pin this around about where it should fall and account for a little bit of stretching so that it'll actually hold the shirt up and um, make sure that I can get it over my head and all those little details and then basically estimate the size of the neckband that I want and then I'll come back and pin it after I've kind of gotten more of an idea of what size we're looking at. So I did want to show you real quick about basically how I'm estimating on the size of it and it actually turns out that it looks like 
um, 24 inches, the what I cut the band to be, will be just right. And so that was kind of a stroke of luck. But pretty much what I did is I took one of my binder clips and I clipped it to the back of the um, racer back here. And I do know, yes, I'm aware that my neck band's backwards, but it's just easier to work with, with this way. So you can see how when this part isn't being held up, it kind of slouches down and is really unflattering. And so that's why I was saying you do want some tautness here. And so then that's going to help pull that up. And then you can see, this is real exact science here, how those kind of sort of meet up. So it looks like it will be about right. So we're going to just go with it and see what happens. Um, worst case, you can always rip out the stitches later. But we'll see if this works. It looks like it's about right. Looks like I got a nice little uh, seam allowance there. So obviously I would flip the neckband around in this joint part. <laughs> Won't be in the back, but um, I'm going to go take this off and put my regular shirt back on and we'll get to pinning. So now what I'm going to do is, as always, mark the center point of the front here with a little notch, like so, and then I'm going to unpin this and I'm going to mark the center point of my band. Then we're going to line up our notches. Like that, right sides facing together. And then um, we're doing binding and not band style. So you can see it's not folded or anything. I'm just doing. Um, one layer of fabric against the main piece. Now you're going to want to pull it a little bit to stretch. The way I did this last time, which actually worked pretty good, is you see how the neck band, let's see if I can hold this up, see how the neck band naturally curves like that. Pretty much I took the band part and I made a straight line. You see like that? So it just adds a little bit of pulling, but not a lot. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. Just kind of pull it so it's, what's that, the hypotenuse? <laughs> if this were like a little mini triangle. So then pull it just like that. So it's just a little bit taut, but not too, not pulling too much. Otherwise you'll get some gathering on the neck there. And I probably should have done this first, but I'm gonna go ahead and, um, so the two ends of this together on my serger. And then we're going to take that center back. Make sure we don't twist our band at all. Um, and we're going to attach that to the center back here. And clip it. Once you've done that, then you're going to serge this little part. You're not going to serge all this extra band fabric. We'll deal with that later. And then um, we'll check and make sure that's not twisted. It looks twisted to me. Okay, no, it's not. And then um, serge this little itty bitty part right here as well. All right, so those are surged. And then the way that I do my bands that I've found is both easy and works nicely is I simply fold the surge up towards the band and then I fold the band over the seam like that. And you can see how that gives it basically a very small band. And then what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch with a, I got to put my twin needle on there. I'm going to top stitch with a twin needle or stretch stitch, whatever you have, um, on this band. And then afterwards, we're going to go and trim this extra piece. Now on the 
parts that don't have any surging, you're just going to continue the same width of the surging and just do that same folding technique as if it was attached to something and it will make this nice little band. I'll show it once I um, go ahead and do that top stitching. So I'm going to do that real quick. One thing I will say is I do go through and I pin the band folded. It just makes sewing a lot easier. So I'll go through and I'll fold all my binding including this part that is not surged um, because then when I go through to sew it, it just it makes it go a lot smoother. So you can see here, I don't know if you can really tell, but you can see how that band part is folded and how I've pinned it all around. And then I'm going to go ahead and do it. So you can see, we're starting to see a little sneak peek of how that's going to look. I think it's really cute. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and top stitch our bands and straps, and then we'll go through and trim the extra fabric. Oh, cute. Cute, 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 cute. Look at that. That's looking really darling. I guess, you know, if you are not a big fan of crop tops, this would also make a really nice casual sports bra for just lounging around the house. Um, I'm trying to build up my confidence, and so hopefully I'll have the confidence to wear it as a shirt this summer. Alright, so now what we're going to do, you see how, I don't know if this camera's focused enough, but you can see how I got my line of stitching here. I um, sewed pretty close to the edge of the binding here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to just trim off all this extra fabric that's curling around. And then we'll end up with a really nice binding. It'll be really cool. Now, of course, while you're cutting this, you're going to be really careful not to actually cut the binding. Because if you trim that, it will be a sad day. It will be sad. I will be sad. Oh, and also be careful not to cut your stitches. Um, the way that I cut my binding is I'll kind of pull. I'll pull that extra fabric away so I can get a really close cut and I just cut really slowly but doing this does put your stitches more in danger of getting a little snip. If you do trim them by accident just go over that spot again with um, your stitching. Not a big deal but just do try to be careful of that. Alright, there's our extra. So you can see, when you hold it up, how you can't tell that there's that raw edge on the other side at all. Just looks nice and neat and a very small trim binding or strap, which I really like. There's the back of it. That's really cute. So I wanted to um, take a little time to show you up close how I did the binding so that you can actually see what it looks like up close. So you can see on the front I have my um, twin needle stitching right here and um, that's what secures the binding on. So first we surged it along um, the main piece here and then we folded it over towards the back and top stitched it down and then you can see here this raw edge that's really close to my stitching I just went through and trimmed off that extra fabric so that it made this nice trim small thin binding well you can see here is our finished product I absolutely love this it's super cute I'm really happy with where it hits on me it's going to be such a comfortable top to wear in the summer when it's hot um, you can see on the back it has this beautiful racer back and our binding turned out wonderfully i'm really happy with it now uh, please be sure to um, like this video if you liked it and comment down below and also be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on the matching kitty ear hoodie that I will be putting out soon here. Um, this ended up being a really long video and so I'm going to go ahead and separate that into a separate video. And so please be sure to subscribe and 
push that bell notification so that you don't miss out on that because trust me, it is worth it. And I will see you all then. Bye.